The Society of Good Works. This meeting of the Society of Good Works will come to order, shrieked Dr. Saint. The room, which had been a ferment of panic, anger, and mutual blame, suddenly fell silent. Nine figures were gathered at the long table in the Empire Hall assembly room. Dr. Saint sat at the head of the table, with Mr. Nicely standing at the wall behind him, still with a bandaged head. To put an end to all unseemly rumor, Dr. Saint continued, resuming his usual outward calm, last night Theo Saint, my ward, was kidnapped. There were gasps of horror around the table, and murmurs of, I told you so. Details, the old Baron Patience, for pity's sake, we must move quickly, or our entire project is undone. He mopped his bloodhound-like face with an immense hanky. Between the hours of ten o'clock last night and six this morning, the vessel was abducted, Dr. Saint said solemnly. The vessel. Mr. Nicely pulled a face. It was a long time since Theo had been called that. It was clearly part of a long-laid plan. If you know who it was long-laid, then why on earth didn't you act to stop it? Baron Patience asked. It only emerged that it had been long laid when my trusted housemaid, recruited from one of our own orphanages by Lady Blessing herself. Oh, don't drag me into it, Lady Blessing protested, half hidden under an immense dark hood. Dr. Saint ignored her. It only emerged, as I say, when my house servant, Clarice Cripps, did not appear for work this morning at 5.30, as she is ordered to. Mr. Nicely was then required to attend to my ward's medication, and found him gone. D d do we know who the perpetrators are? asked an nervous, immaculately dressed gentleman in a white suit and lavender gloves. He was known in the society as Lord Dove. Not without absolute certainty, Dr. Saint replied. Clarice Cripps must have been part of a larger conspiracy. It is our darkest hour, boomed parent patience. His enormous figure sprawled in a leather chair in the far corner. If the vessel should remain at large for too long, become independent. Please, cried out Dr. Saint indignantly. Credit us with some intelligence. The vessel cannot thrive outside of our protection. He has been brought up to be ignorant and weak. A murmur of approval ran around the table. The ill was raised in splendid isolation. Dr. Saint explained proudly, sheltered from all knowledge of the world, encouraged to mistrust the illusions of happiness and achievement, even his diet was designed to save him from the dangers of excess health and the follies of vigour. He will be unable to cope with freedom. You assume he is still alive, growled the Baron. If the dodo has got hold of him, the dodo has been dead for over a hundred years, groaned Dr. Saint. Or the toxidermist! Lord Dove winced. One of our molly coddlers said she saw a gargoyle on the wing last night, said Lord Dove. And to think I punished her for falling asleep and dreaming on duty. Murmurs of dismay ran around the table. Dr. Saint waved his long fingers airily, as if these speculations could be wafted away like unwanted smoke. The meeting was getting out of hand. We face no obstacle, he said his face a mask of a cold determination that could not be overcome by our usual sworn methods of compassion and kindness. There was a murmur of approval from the shadowy assembly. There is no alternative, said Dr. Saint. We need eyes and ears everywhere, and hands to snatch our property back. He paused for a moment, then spoke in a grave hush, pointing a pale finger toward the ground. We must release our ancient allies. The company took a collective deep breath. There was a gasp from Lord Dove. Ugh, not that awful tribe. Yes, that perfectly awful tribe, said Dr. Saint. By Jove, rumbled Baron Patience, sitting back as if needing physical room to take on board this dramatic idea. I like it. We won't have to see them, will we? whined Lady Blessing. Her gaunt but beautiful profile glimpsed palely within her black hood. Leave them to me, Dr. Saint said. I feel such remorse for allowing Theo to fall into enemy hands that I must atone in some way. Leave all the tricky details to Dr. Saint. A great, great man, marveled Mr. Nicely in the background. 
Uh, what were you going to do about the police? Asked Lord Dove, fiddling with his perfect white cuffs. You'd say they've actually been here, in Empire Hall. What do they know? What are they after? It was an unrelated burglary. A small matter. Dr. Saint replied. Mr. Nicely caressed his bandaged head, which was not a small matter to him. Scotland Yard could be a nuisance, persisted Lord Dove, anxiously drumming his gloved fingers on the tabletop. If they find out about the abduction, they will certainly want to know why we didn't report it to them. They can never know, snapped Dr. Saint. Inspector Finley is our main concern, Lady Blessing observed. He has shown a little interest in the Society of Good Works before. Dr. Saint folded his long white hands together in his habitual gesture of prayer. A little interest is too much, he sighed. Poor Inspector Finley has had enough worries on his head. I think an act of kindness is in order. He pursed his lips and thought, I have heard the inspector is so overweight. His colleagues fear he may suffer a heart attack one day. Perhaps if he were to win a contest, free cream cakes for a year. Oh, I shall see to it, said Lord Dove with relish. I am a lethal master of confectionery. And he is partial to burgers and donuts. Perhaps if a cheap fast food restaurant were op to open right next to the police station. No problem, said the Baron. Our Department of Works will be notified at once. Oh, that won't be so easy, remarked Lady Blessing. There's a children's hospital next to the police station currently. <sighs> Get our friend the Prime Minister to close it down then, Dr. Saint snapped. Goodness me, we sent him enough friendly donations. It is rather a large hospital, Lady Blessing added. Excellent, said Dr. Saint. I'm picturing a burger bar and two cake shops. After all, an honest policeman like Inspector Finley deserves nothing less. Work related stress is a terrible thing, and I think this act of compassion will shorten his uh, sufferings considerably. Dr. Saint smiled as he received a ripple of applause. <laughs> and certainly his life giggled Lord Dove. That is what I meant, said Dr. Saint testily. Now we must all be prepared. Our master plan, the Great Liberation, will go ahead as scheduled. Soon we will control dark forces beyond the imagining of ordinary men. It is what we have always dreamed of, rumbled Baron Patience. When the sleeping army awakes, none will be able to stand in the way of our good works. Dr. Saint gazed kindly upon his fellow board members. We will see a happier world then, he simpered, almost shedding a tear. A world where only the ch chosen few will suffer the worries of power and the burden of riches. A world where the ordinary man will enjoy the virtues of poverty and the bliss of slavery. And under our guidance, this nation will command a vast docile empire as it once did. Glorious rumbled Baron Patience, thumping on the table and rattling everyone's china teacups. <coughs> Summon our disgusting allies, then. Just give me time to get home and lock the door first. Dr. Saint smiled, convinced he had carried the day. With them on the case, he assured the gathering, I am confident that Theo will soon be back in our hands. Six enormous men flanked Dr. Saint as he strode through the no-entry sign to the gateway to the abandoned sewage pumping station. The men, powerful brutes, brutes, swamped in blue overalls, were known within the society simply as the foundlings. Men with no family to miss them or ask questions if anything should happen to them. Ugh, who is that lump? asked Dr. Saint, pointing at the dead body of a fat man in a day-glow orange coat sprawled out on the floor. A maintenance man, sir, said one of the foundlings. Fence repairman or something. He spotted us breaking in. I had to, um... Relieve him of his earthly worries. Dr. Saint frowned. Well, uh, make it look like he dropped his own mallet on his head, he said, and get Lord Dub to find out tomorrow's lottery numbers. Uh, lottery numbers, sir? The foundling looked baffled. We can slip a winning ticket into the pocket of our dead friend here, Dr. Saint said with relish. When they discover his body, his family will be too busy spending the lottery money to care about what really happened to him. The foundling nodded and hurried away. 
Mr. Nicely appeared, carrying a pair of brand new Wellington boots. He appeared gloomy and distracted. Bearing up, Mr. Nicely? asked Dr. Saint suddenly. Mr. Nicely sighed. I just had a funny feeling that I left something important behind, the butler said rather glumly. Then I realized what it was. Master Theo. Dr. Saint glared at him. Pull yourself together, he snapped, because if things ever start getting too much for you, just let me know and I shall see to it. You get a nice long rest. Mr. Saint made a note to himself not to sigh any more. A huge front door and confronted them. It took two of the foundlings, using all of their might, to turn the wheel that opened it. Dr. St. wrinkled his nose as foul air poured out of the doorway. He sat on a control panel while Mr. Nicely took off his employer's shoes and replaced them with the shining new ones. What on earth do you have in your nostrils, Mr. Nicely? Dr. St. asked. The butler smiled sheepishly. Lord Dove said it would be pretty smelly in the sewage station, sir, Mr. Nicely said. The operations department issued me one of those nose felters. Some poor lawyer chuckled. Oh, I hardly think an old soldier like you will need such a thing, Mr. Nicely, Dr. Saint said. Pass them here. The butler handed them over in silence. Mr. Saint, Dr. Saintly smartly pulled a filter in his own mouth. I, however, am a more delicate flower, he said. Now let us enter the network. The party trooped into the stinking tunnel. Uh, bored of my asking, whispered Mr. Nicely. Uh, but what are we doing here, sir? We're setting up that meeting with the old friends of the society, Dr. Saint said, wrinkling his nose in disgust. Uh, not the class of person I would uh, like to see a nice chap like yourself mixing with, Mr. Nicely. Mr. Nicely glowed. The old friendship was back. In... That case, hardly suitable company for a saintly gentleman like yourself, Dr. Saint. Hardly, whispered Dr. Saint. But put back in the Victorian age, when the philanthropist set up the Society of Good Works, he realized that there are two Londons, the glorious city of human endeavor, we all know, and a second city, its shadow, as it were, existing alongside dark and more dangerous. In order to achieve anything in the bright lights, one must also have influence in the darkness. The soft wallowing of their waiting echoed around them as they ventured deeper into the tunnel. Do you know where we are now, Mr. Nicely? asked the saint. In the Monarchfield sewage pumping station, said Mr. Nicely. I may be slow on the uptake, but I did manage to read the old notice on the gate. That is the sign we want the world to read, Dr. Saint smiled. They rounded a corner and were faced with a metal cage in a shaft, poised over a black pit. Two of the foundlings stayed in the access tunnel, while everyone else descended in the cage. It creaked and rocked as it plummeted downwards. Mr. Nicely flinched as ice-cold drips ran down his neck. Invigorating, he declared with false gusto. Back in the early days of our society, explained Dr. Saint, the philanthropist persuaded the government to let him set up a waste disposal system down here as a charitable gesture towards improving living conditions for the city. How typical of a revered founder, said the butler. It enabled the Society of Good Books to explore, develop, and exploit opportunities down here in what we call the network. It provided us with unique resources. The cage had reached its destination. They stepped out, and softly glowing globes illuminated their way. Mr. Nicely had never seen these before, and peered inside to see luminous, living fungus inside the globes, providing the light. Dr. Saint led the party to a chamber, where banks of control panels <coughs> rose up in the darkness. All Founder understood the subtle things in life, said Dr. Saint. He knew that excess kindness can kill as surely as excess cruelty. He was also a master of alchemy. He knew that certain mixtures, when combined, could achieve great magical effects. Mr. Nicely smiled as all around, controls, lanterns, and bulbs lit up in a ghoulish mixture of greens. I am used to being in the company of genius, Mr. Nicely said, so I shall strive not to be overawed by these latest marvels, sir. We are going to perform a marvel, then depart at a swift pace, said Dr. Saint. He signaled to two of the foundlings to step forward. Gentlemen, he said, it is time to release the reapers.